The main goal of modern astronomy and planetary science is to discover the components of life spread throughout the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope is perhaps humanity's greatest hope in turning this mission into a success. The Space Observatory is the latest in NASA's line of telescopes tasked with exploring the cosmos. Now that the very first images of the telescope have been released, scientists have already determined that the observatory is extremely capable of detecting life in the universe. Some reports state that the telescope has discovered signs of life on an exoplanet called WASP-96b. Let's take a closer look at this amazing discovery. The James Webb Space Telescope is considered to be the peak of human innovation. What sets the observatory apart from its predecessors is the impressive range of equipment it has on board, the first of which is the near-infrared camera, also known as the NEAR-CAM. This instrument will be crucial for accomplishing Webb's flagship goal detecting the light from the earliest stars and galaxies. It's not just a simple infrared camera, but is fitted with some extra implements called coronagraphs. The coronagraphs will enable astronomers to block out the light of a star and look at what's happening around it, which makes it great for discovering orbiting exoplanets. Then comes the near-infrared spectrograph, or NEAR-SPEC. This instrument is the main tool for cracking the chemistry of the universe. It will split the light coming from the distant universe into spectra, revealing the properties of the observed objects, including their temperature, mass, and chemical composition. Because some of these objects are extremely distant, and the light coming from them will be extremely faint, the James Webb Space Telescope, despite its giant mirror, will have to stare at them for hundreds of hours. To make these observations more efficient, NEAR-SPEC will be able to observe 100 such distant galaxies at the same time. The Mid-Infrared Instrument, or MIRI, is a combination of a camera and a spectrograph, but unlike the previous two, it observes the longer wavelengths of the mid-infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which will make it a go-to instrument for everyone looking to study everything, from comets and asteroids at the outskirts of the solar system to newly born stars in distant galaxies. The images of MIRI will be the most akin to those that turn the Hubble Space Telescope into a legend. And last but not least is the Fine Guidance Sensor, Slash Near Infrared Imager, and Slitless Spectrograph, also known as the FGS slash NIRISS. This instrument will also contribute to the detection of the first light, spot exoplanets, and analyze their chemistry. These infrared instruments are what set James Webb apart from its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. These instruments will help the telescope detect faint light coming from early stars and galaxies more than 13 billion light years away. Hubble was built to detect visible and ultraviolet light. These early galaxies do emit visible light, but because of their distance, the wavelength of this light gets stretched into the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum by the so-called redshift. The technology has come a long way since Hubble's early years, and the James Webb Space Telescope project has been pushing it further along the way. The James Webb Space Telescope's giant mirror will feed the light of stars and galaxies into four cutting-edge instruments designed not only to take images, but to also analyze the chemical composition of the near and distant universe. This is done with a technique known as spectroscopy, which looks at how matter in the universe absorbs light. As different chemical elements absorb light at different wavelengths, astronomers will be able to reconstruct what stars, nebulas, galaxies, and planets within the telescope's sight are made of. These improvements in the resolution of infrared imaging are critical for imaging the furthest reaches of the universe. Where the Hubble Space Telescope, or the recently retired infrared telescope Spitzer, could provide only a rough estimate of an ancient galaxy's age and chemical composition, Webb will deliver with precision. While the Hubble gave us our first views into the early universe, the JWST will help us look deeper than ever before. When it comes to these distant galaxies, the Wide Field Camera 3 aboard the Hubble runs out of wavelength and makes detections that may be inaccurate. The JWST will help us understand which of these findings are correct. The new telescope can see up to 13 billion years into the past, and it already sees galaxies that, by the moment in their evolution, may have formed several generations of stars. Scientists say that if we are seeing material some 500 million years after the Big Bang, it must have been made even earlier by stars we haven't seen yet. Another thing the JWST will be good for uncovering is what happens when early stars die and release their material into their surroundings, giving birth to new stars. Astronomers know that the early universe had a very different chemical composition from what we see today. It consisted only of high 
hydrogen, helium, and a little bit of lithium. All the other chemical elements that we see now, including those that make life possible, were cooked up throughout eons inside those stars. A lot of the chemical synthesis in the universe is around massive stars when they explode, or low mass stars in their final stages of evolution. There's lots of interesting slow process chemistry that can happen in their atmospheres because of the temperatures and pressures. Scientists are fascinated by how we can go from having only three chemical elements to the vast array of diversity we see around us today. The spectroscopes aboard the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to probe the chemical kitchens of those early galaxies, seeing what was cooking inside individual stars and what they fertilized the wider cosmos with when they exploded in powerful supernovas. Many believe that spectroscopy is the real power of Webb. We typically see this process on galactic scales, but with Webb, we'll have such a high resolution that we'll be able to view individual objects. While the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope are frequently compared, their images are quite different, revealing different aspects of the universe. While Hubble's strength is imaging the visible universe, Webb's infrared superpowers enable the telescope to see through dust right into the heart of nebulas, galaxies, and star-forming regions that are hidden from Hubble's view. Previous infrared observatories, such as NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, were much smaller than Webb. Therefore, they couldn't see as far as Webb, and when they did, they only glimpsed those star-forming regions in a limited resolution. While astronomers have been able to map star formation in our galaxy, the Milky Way, the James Webb Space Telescope will rip open star birth centers in farther away reaches of the universe. We will see the more distant, more extreme galaxies where the environmental conditions are very different from what we see in the Milky Way. Previously, we could only see stars about eight times the mass of the Sun, but now we should be able to see the formation of stars about as big as the Sun, and that process has never been observed before. Science is in a state of constant motion. It tends to evolve at a very fast pace as new things constantly increase our understanding of the universe. As a result, science has moved forward since the conception of the James Webb Space Telescope, and new areas have emerged that may not have been foreseen when the first light machine was first conceived. In 1995, the first two planets orbiting another star than our Sun were discovered. Since then, thousands of exoplanets of various sizes and kinds have been detected. And while not designed with these potential other Earths in mind, the James Webb Space Telescope turns out to be positioned to not only discover many more, but also to tell us much finer details about their nature than any other mission before. These planets have atmospheres that have various molecules in them, things like carbon dioxide, oxygen, and nitrogen. The best way to look at these molecules is with infrared spectroscopy. One of JWST's instruments, the Near Infrared Camera, is fitted with extra implements called coronagraphs, which block out the light of a star to see more clearly what is happening around it. That indeed might involve alien systems of planets, some of which might be habitable with water and an atmosphere that could support life just like Earth. Thirty years ago, nobody would have imagined that we could study the composition of atmospheres of planets around other stars. Now scientists are doing this regularly, and the JWST can improve these results substantially. Thanks to these impressive advancements in technology, the James Webb Space Telescope has been able to study the atmosphere of an exoplanet called WASP-96b. The telescope has captured the distant signature of water, along with evidence of clouds and haze, and the atmosphere surrounding a hot, puffy gas giant planet orbiting a distant sun-like star. The observation, which reveals the presence of specific gas molecules based on tiny decreases in the brightness of precise colors of light, is the most detailed of its kind to date, demonstrating Webb's unprecedented ability to analyze atmospheres hundreds of light years away. While the Hubble Space Telescope has analyzed numerous exoplanet atmospheres over the past two decades, capturing the first clear detection of water in 2013, Webb's immediate and more detailed observation marks a giant leap forward in the quest to characterize potentially habitable planets beyond Earth. WASP-96b is one of more than 5,000 confirmed exoplanets in the Milky Way, located roughly 1,150 light-years away in the southern sky constellation Phoenix. It represents a type of gas giant that has no direct analog in our solar system. With a mass less of half than that of Jupiter and a diameter 1.2 times greater, WASP-96b is much puffier than any planet orbiting our Sun. And with a temperature greater than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, it is significantly hotter. 
WASP-96b orbits extremely close to its sun-like star, just one-ninth of the distance between Mercury and the Sun. The combination of large size, short orbital period, puffy atmosphere, and lack of contaminating light from objects nearby in the sky makes WASP-96b an ideal target for atmospheric observations. On June 21st, Webb's near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph measured light from the WASP-96 system for 6.4 hours as the planet moved across the star. The result is a light curve showing the overall dimming of starlight during the transit and a transmission spectrum revealing the brightness change of individual wavelengths of infrared light between 0.6 and 2.8 microns. While the light curve confirms properties of the planet that had already been determined from other observations, the existence, size, and orbit of the planet, the transmission spectrum reveals previously hidden details of the atmosphere, the unambiguous signature of water, indications of haze, and evidence of clouds that were thought not to exist based on prior observations. A transmission spectrum is made by comparing starlight filtered through a planet's atmosphere as it moves across the star to the unfiltered starlight detected when the planet is beside the star. Researchers can detect and measure the abundance of key gases in a planet's atmosphere based on the absorption pattern, the locations and heights of peaks on the graph. In the same way that people have distinctive fingerprints and DNA sequences, atoms and molecules have characteristic patterns of wavelength that they absorb. The spectrum of WASP-96b captured by the NIRISS is not only the most detailed near-infrared transmission spectrum of an exoplanet atmosphere captured to date, but it also covers a remarkably wide range of wavelengths, including visible red light and a portion of the spectrum that has not previously been accessible from other telescopes. This part of the spectrum is particularly sensitive to water, as well as other key molecules like oxygen, methane, and carbon dioxide, which are not immediately obvious in the WASP-96b spectrum, but should be detectable in other exoplanets planned for observation by Webb. The evidence of an atmosphere and water vapor on the planet suggests that it could be ideal for harboring life. Over the coming year, researchers will use spectroscopy to analyze the surfaces and atmosphere of several dozen exoplanets, from small rocky planets to gas and ice-rich giants. This may bring forth even more discoveries of planets suitable for life. If you enjoyed this video, consider checking out this other one, which looks into the terrifying star explosion which may be seen in the sky this year. Do you think there is life on WASP-96b? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.